Hi, it's Karen at the Cool Tool Studio, and I'm here to share a really fun dry construction project. We've had a lot of questions lately about hollow form rings, so I designed this project to walk you through one of the ways that I go about making them. Today, I'm going to walk you through how to make this style of hollow form ring. But there's lots of different ways that you can personalize your pieces by changing the bandwidth or the height of your construction. Here's what you're going to need for the construction portion of this project a work surface, some assorted ring templates, a hand drill, a clay shaper, an ultra clay pick, a pair of dividers, an extra Teflon work surface, and a tough card. Some cool slip, a clay hydrator, a wick away with a brush, and some clay thickness rolling frames. A micro fine sanding pad, easy 960 lump and syringe, silicone ring mandrels, and a wonder roller. Just as a note before we get started, I ended up using about 15 grams of clay in this project, but you're going to need a little bit more to work with. I'm going to start off with some cool slip on my work surface. I'm going to be doing this entire project with two cards thickness, and that's going to keep things nice and lightweight. And I'm able to work this thin because the project has quite a bit of structural strength from the construction. So I'm going to start off by making the cylinder that goes inside my ring. And since I'm going to be rolling a strip, I'm going to start with my lump kind of rectangular. And I'm working with a new Wonder Roller. And I really love these because you don't have to use lubrication on the roller itself, and it leaves a really nice surface on the clay. And it might stick a little bit, but the surface that it comes off with is really nice and clean. So I'm going to trim things a bit so I have some more room to keep rolling. I'm going to give it one more roll to make sure it's nice, even thickness. Oh, we still grew. Plenty of clay. So I'm going to be cutting my strip to be about as wide as the mandrel, and that's about four little squares on my grid. So I'm going to use that to help me cut my strip. Then I'm just going to kind of trim it to be a square. This is going to be plenty of clay for this portion, but it's always good to have extra when you're shaping your ring shank. So I'm going to put my excess in the clay hydro to keep it nice and moist. So now I'm going to be wrapping this around my silicone ring mandrel. And again, I like these extra work surfaces because it makes moving your clay without disrupting the shape of it easy. So I've found that when you're working with two cards thickness, that if you overlap the clay and then cut, that the excess material from the overlap, when you line up the seams, ends up giving you enough clay for it to shrink to the mandrel without cracking. So I'm going to remove that excess on the inside. And then I'm going to line up these edges. And don't worry about the top and bottom edge if it's kind of off a little bit and it's kind of wrinkly. We're going to end up trimming this cylinder to fit our piece exactly anyways. So I'm lining that up. And I'm going to add some water at the seam and kind of drag it back and forth to kind of really mesh the clay together there. Of 
All right, doesn't look great now, but we're gonna clean it up. So I'm gonna allow this to dry and then we'll catch back up. So my cylinder's dry and doesn't look too great at this point, but we're gonna clean it up. And there's two ways you can go about that. You can use a scalpel and trim off this extra edge and I would just go around the whole piece. Or you can take some sandpaper and then in a circular motion, sand down that edge. And it doesn't have to be perfectly level or anything because once we put this into our ring itself, we're gonna be trimming it yet again. But you just wanna make yourself have a smooth edge for when you are inserting it to your main piece. So just clean up and even out these outside edges. So let's move on and construct the rest of the ring. Before we start cutting our other components, let's take a minute to talk about ring sizing. I knew that I wanted this ring to be a size six and a half. So I formed my ring at a size eight and a half. And if you want to download this form, it's available on our website if you just search metal clay ring sizers. And it's really handy because it tells you what size to format for what ring you want in the end. So since I want a six and a half, I formed the cylinder at an eight and a half. But now I'm going to be cutting the outside walls of my ring. And if I were to cut an eight and a half, this would butt up against it. So I'm going to see what size will accommodate the two cards thickness of my wall here. And 10 is close, but it's a little tight. So I'm actually going to bump up to 11 and that's going to fit in nice and easily. And then if there are some gaps, you can fill those with syringe. So I'm going to be cutting at a size 11. So just like before, I'm gonna be working with two cards clay thickness, and there's still some cool slip on my work area, so I'm not gonna add any more. And I'm gonna be rolling out clay for the side panels on this hollow ring. And I like to start by cutting out the outside and then I'll come in and cut the inside. And when I'm working with a template that has sharp corners, I like to cut to those corners because if I tried to round it, it would end up rounding it some. So I'm starting at the bottom and I'm coming up to that corner. And I'm gonna do that again at the top as well. And then I'm gonna cut the one for the other side. And again, I'm using the size 11 here. And I clean up my excess. And now I'm coming in with the ring size hole template. And I've actually went ahead and marked on mine, kind of an equidistant spacing. That way I know generally where I want to be positioning it. This is another reason why I like working with excess work surfaces. I can just kind of rotate things easily without having to move my whole work surface. All right, so now I'm gonna remove this excess and then I'm gonna allow these two to dry. For this project, it's really helpful to have flexible clay. So I'm gonna be drying these components with heat. And when I do that alongside sanding the surfaces gently, it becomes really nice and bendy. And that's gonna help with our hollow construction. So I'm gonna move these off to dry and then we're gonna cut the ring shank. So now I'm ready to cut the ring shank for this project. And this is a point where you can kind of customize your ring depending on which shank you choose. If you choose a wider ring shank, your shape's gonna have a more square face to it. 
For this project, I selected the wider, whereas on the one that I'm showing you today, I worked with this nice middle one here. And then for this one, I actually just used a strip of clay. So it's up to you how thick you would like to make your ring. So I'm still going to be rolling to two cards thickness. And again, I'm making a strip, so I'm kind of starting with a rectangle. Plenty of clay here. And like before, I'm going to be cutting to those points. And then I'm going to allow this guy to dry with some heat as well. And you especially want this guy to be flexible because he's got to make that curve at the back for your ring shape. Once all my pieces are dry, we'll meet back up and put them together. So these pieces are nice and dry and I just took them off the hot plate. And before we start constructing them, I also wanted to show you that you can shorten these if you don't like your rings to be super tall. For example, this one was made straight from the template. I didn't trim it at all. But this one, you can see that there's less material from the band to the top. So I'm going to show you how to trim. I'm going to use dividers so I can be assured that I'm cutting an even strip across the whole top. So I'm going to be doing my marking and cutting on an old tough card because I don't want to damage the surfaces that I roll my clay on. So I'm going to be applying some downward pressure and dragging it across so I get a nice line to follow. And then I'm going to repeat that on the other one as well. And now I know that these are going to be the same height. So I'm going to use my scalpel to follow that line. And sometimes I like to do this in two cuts. That way I can make sure I'm following it nice and crisply for the first pass. And then follow that groove to cut all the way through on the second. All right, so now I'm going to be sanding these surfaces and that's gonna help make them flexible. And I just have micro fine sanding. And I'm just working in a circular motion. And I'm gonna do that to both faces and then also to the ring shank itself and you really want to spend some time making that ring shank flexible because it has to do the most bending. So now I've thoroughly sanded both sides of my components and you can see how nice and flexible the clay has become. And at this point, I'm ready to start joining pieces. So I'm gonna take this off to the side so I can reclaim that dust. So I'm gonna start off by just tacking the band at the bottom here and I'm gonna do that so I can bring it around after it's dried and keep things from slipping. I find that if you try to do it all in one go, when you're lining it up here, it's gonna slide down here. So we're gonna break it down to step by step. So I'm going to wet this edge. And then I'm gonna wet one of the sides here. And I'm going to bend it so it's looking kind of in half. And then I'm going to line it up on top there at the bottom. And this might take some scooting. And sometimes it helps to put a ring mandrel inside to keep you from either angling the top edge in or out. So 
So I'm just focusing on that very bottom lip and trying to get things to line up. I'm applying a little bit of pressure and I'm gonna hold it until I can remove my fingers and it kind of stays at that bottom edge. And like I said, it's okay if these kind of spring out. You just want it to be attached to the very bottom there. All right, so that looks good. I'm gonna move it off to the heat so it can dry thoroughly before I start bending the rest of the edge. So this is dried and I know it's tacked because I can pick it up by the strip here and it doesn't fall apart. And I'm going to wet that edge again and then wet under there as well. And I'm gonna support this back piece while bending around the rest of that edge. And sometimes you kind of have to push back a little bit with your bends. And it just takes some kind of back and forth fussing and making sure everything's lined up. And once I'm pretty happy with how it looks, I'm gonna add a little more water, both the outside and the inside. And I'm gonna keep my pressure on it until it looks like it's gonna hold. And then yet again, we're gonna take it off to dry. All right, so Looks like that's holding. I'm gonna take it off to dry this half, and then I'm gonna repeat that to this side. So now that this is dry, I'm gonna go in with some syringe to reinforce that seam. And I'm just gonna really quickly, lightly dampen the area that will be receiving the syringe. And then I'm gonna come in with the medium tip on the syringe and add some in that corner. And it might seem kind of counterintuitive to dry and then come back and dampen and add syringe, but I do that so I can be assured that my ring is gonna hold its shape and those seams aren't gonna slip on me when I'm adding the syringe. So I'm just following that corner all the way around. And then with a damp brush, just kind of evening it out some. And I'm doing this on the inside of my seam because it's not gonna be seen. And if you have any low areas on the outside of your ring, you can go and fill those with syringe, but it's much easier and cleaner to do your reinforcing work on the inside of your piece. So I'm just pushing it and making sure it's going to do a good job of joining both those faces. All right. So now I'm going to be adding the top face to my ring. I'm going to re-dampen my brush, and dampen this edge. And then I'm gonna dampen the edge on this face as well. And I'm just gonna place it on top. And I'm gonna try to scoot it around to make sure it's lined up as best as it can be before I apply pressure. And you want this top face to be kind of level, but we're gonna be sanding that level once it's all constructed. So you mostly wanna make sure things are lining up on your bottom edge. And one of the parts that's so great about making these rings out of metal clay is that you have the room to add and subtract. So if things aren't quite lining up perfectly at one seam, you can come in with some syringe and fix that. But you want it to be as close as you can. You wanna pay extra attention to these top edges and make sure that it's not kind of like angled in Make sure you bring it out and line that up. 
And now I'm gonna be very generous with adding some more water once my shape is set. So I'm gonna add my water to the outside and then place it on heat to dry. And then just like before, I'm gonna be adding syringe on this inside once it's dry. While that one's drying, I have another piece here that I've already added the reinforcing syringe in. And I'm gonna show you how to kind of trim up some extra edge. Depending on how short you decide to make your ring, you might have some edge from the extra long ring shank to trim. So again, you can use the dividers to measure generally and mark. And then it doesn't have to be absolutely exact because again, we're gonna be sanding this. It just kind of gives you a general idea of where to make your cut. a little lower than the line there. I'll have to sand my piece down some because of that. All right, so these still aren't perfectly lined up, but there's an easy fix for that. I'm going to take some 320 sandpaper and take my ring upside down and gently sand in a circular motion. And you want to make sure you're doing a circular motion because if you were to just be pushing forward and backward, forward and backward, if you lean slightly, you're going to take down one of your corners. And you want to make sure your piece is very thoroughly dry before you do this because the pressure from sanding could open your seams if they're not dried thoroughly. So it looks like I still have a bit to take down. And I'm using sandpaper instead of a sanding pad because the sanding pad has some give to it. And at this point, I want it to be perfectly flat. So I'm gonna be working on a flat surface. All right, so that's gonna give us a nice flat face to join this top face to. But before we do that, we're going to insert our ring cylinder. So it's gonna be a kind of tight fit and that's why you wanted to clean up any extra bumps and edges. And if it's not a tight fit, again, you can come in and fill things in with some syringe. So it slid in nicely on that side. And I'm gonna bump it down there. There's a little bit of a gap here, but we can fix that and we're going to fill it with some syringe after the piece is joined and cemented in place. So I'm going to start off with water again. And since the side is the tighter, closer fit. I'm gonna start off by joining there. And there might be some edges that are connecting here. Yeah, that top edge can get some water to attach. I'm gonna allow this to dry before I come in with syringe to fill any gaps and solidify the connection. So the cylinder's been tacked in place and now I'm gonna come in and add some syringe to support that seam, but also on this side, kind of fill up the gap there. So I'm gonna really quickly dampen the areas to receive the syringe. And then since I'm gonna be trimming away this excess and then sanding anyways, I'm gonna apply the syringe to the outside. Again, I'm just gonna kind of even it out. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna be sanding this anyways. 
I just want to make sure I'm not going to have any holes. All right, so now this side has some holes to fill. And I'm gonna dampen them again. And then this time with my syringe, I'm gonna place it I'm kind of pointing down. And then this point, I'm gonna come in with a dampened clay shaper and kind of push and make sure that I'm getting it down into that void. And then I'm gonna repeat it up here where there's a gap. beveled edge on this is perfect for getting into that corner. And then you can go ahead and apply it to the rest as well. But then I'm going to allow this to dry and then again kind of do one more coat on top of those areas that had the gap just to make sure everything's filled and has a nice smooth even edge when I get things cleaned up. So I'm going to even out this layer of syringe and allow it to dry and then just give it one more thin one to kind of level things out. And then we'll be ready to start trimming and sanding the form of this ring. So now it's dry and I'd be ready to put this top face on. But before I do, I want to make sure that I drill a hole and it's easiest to do that now while well, you can still have access to the ring shank. And I just have a hand drill here that I'm making a hole with. The reason you want to put a hole in your pieces is that we're going to be making a closed vessel. And if you were to put it in the kiln without a hole, as the air in your piece expands, it could cause some tearing at your seams. This piece is now ready to get the top face. So I'm going to roll some more clay to two cards thickness. So there's cool slip on my work surface and I'm ready to roll. And I waited until I had my ring constructed to roll the clay for this top face so that I can use the ring itself as kind of a guide for how big this piece needs to be. And I'm not pushing it into the clay or anything at this point. I'm just taking a measurement for approximately how wide and how tall this piece needs to be. And I'm going to cut it with some extra room for when it shrinks as it dries, but also so there's room for me to cut a nice straight even edge with. All right, so that's plenty. And you're gonna take that square and allow it to dry before you join it to your top piece. So I'm ready to join these two faces, and again, I'm just going to dampen both faces before applying some gentle pressure. And I'm gently pushing down, and I'm going to go back around this edge. And then, just once more, I'm going to allow this to dry before coming back and reinforcing those seams with syringe. So just like before, we're going to quickly dampen those edges before they receive the syringe. 
and we're going to follow those lines with the syringe. And again, I'm being pretty generous. It's not the most clean work, but there's plenty of times to come back in and clean things up with the brush a little bit first. But then also when you trim that edge, you'll be doing sanding anyways. I'm gonna allow this to dry and then we're gonna move on to clean up. Now that my piece is dry, I'm gonna trim off all the excess clay. And I'm gonna be using a scalpel for that. And again, I'm not gonna go all the way through in one go. I'm gonna kind of gently apply some pressure and establish an edge close to my piece, but you can always file and sand off material, but you can't as easily add it back on. So I'm just gonna kind of go around the full piece, getting an idea of where I'm gonna be cutting. And if this flange is in your way at this point, I'm just gonna take a corner off and then I'm gonna cut it more cleanly once this ring shank has been removed. So now I'm starting to actually kind of cut through some. And this is kind of clunky, kind of awkward. If you have a jeweler saw, you can do this with that as well. So that's good enough at this point, and then we're gonna file that off. So there's not as much on this side, so I'm actually gonna kind of start level and gently kind of trim away some. gouged a little bit there. We'll have to see if that files out or if I have to put some syringe there. All right, so I'll make quick work of cleaning up the rest of this using the nail file. But for now, I'm also going to come and trim here. And again, I'm gonna leave a little extra And cut close to that edge, but you want to make sure you're not angling in or moving any of that top face. All right, so now we're ready to move on to sanding and filing this form. For the refining portion of this project, you're going to want a tidy tray to collect all of your dust a tropical shine sanding stick, and some 3M sanding pads cut to manageable shapes and sizes. I like to start off by using the sanding sticks as a file to remove material from flat edges and faces. So I'm gonna start off with this excess ring shank here. And it's nice to use the sanding sticks at this point because it's gonna help you keep things level and flat. Then once the majority of the material is removed, I'm gonna move on. And I'm gonna sand this top face. And 
And you're just gonna sand until things are lined up and there's not as noticeable as a seam anymore. And I'm gonna go around and do the whole top face. And this is an opportunity to also come around and clean up the seam here if anything was sticking out a little bit over an edge. And you're just going to use the stick until things are nice and lined up. And then we're going to come in with the pads to really clean things up. So now that a majority of the excess material has been removed, I'm going to move on to sanding pads. And that's just going to even things out and remove the scratches that were made by the sanding stick. And I'm going to work my way from fine to micro fine. A reminder to also sand the inside of your ring so it's nice and smooth and comfortable. And I actually kind of, instead of keeping it perpendicular to that, I'll kind of angle it and gently round out that edge. That just makes it a little more comfortable. This is also a good time to check and make sure that your seam has been nicely concealed. So I spent some time with this piece cleaning it up and it's starting to look really, really nice. In the process of making this ring, sometimes things looked a little messy and unclean, but if you spend some time cleaning them up, they're really forgiving and they clean up quite nicely. I'm ready to add some accents to this piece. And you have a blank slate, you can really do whatever you'd like. Here's what you're gonna need for the embellishing portion of this project. I have a work surface, a circle template, an extra Teflon work surface, and a snake maker. Some tweezers, an ultra clay pick, a wonder roller, and a tough card. A wick away with a brush, our round dome finishing touches mold with a clay scraper, jewel stamps, and I'm gonna be using our classic deco alphabet, ring shanks template, and a four cards thickness rolling frame. I'm gonna start off by rolling some clay to four cards thickness, and I've already put cool slip on my work surface here. And I'm just choosing four cards thickness because it gives me enough room to have some depth for my letter without having too much material there. And I'm gonna select the jewel stamps that I wanna work with. And I'm gonna place it on the transparent snake maker. And this is really convenient because you can see through it and tell where you're gonna be pushing. And you just apply some gentle pressure down. The harder you push, the deeper your impression will be. I think that looks good. And then I'm gonna cut the T out. All right. So I'm going to move this off to the side to dry, and I'm going to talk about how I arranged those dots for my piece. I used our finishing touches molds to make the little round accents on my rings, and briefly, how you use them is by pushing clay into the low areas and then scraping it off. But we have a whole video that will walk you through that if you'd like to consult it. I like to make a bunch all at once and then keep them in an inventory to pull out as needed. So I have some already made and dry here. And when I'm working with these, I find it really convenient to group them into pairings. For example, I grouped these little triangles all together and then picked up the entire unit and moved it onto my piece. So I'm gonna use my template here to kind of plan that. And I'm just gonna line up some at the top there. And I like working this way because you can kind of think, well, what if you want to put a stripe at the back? How thick should that be? How many dots should that be? You can figure that out by coming down here and arranging inside the template and then dampening them and moving away the template and allowing things to dry. So I'm gonna see how many dots I can put along that top edge. So there's almost room for one more, so I'm going to dampen them 
and kind of squish them together a little bit. That way there's not a blank edge there to my design. Oh, this guy flipped. And you can see how when they're damp, they kind of compress some. So I'm going to fit that last one in. And then I also wanted to get nine, that way I can have those little triangular shapes. So I'm going to continue placing dots in this kind of pattern. And then once I like my pattern, I'm going to dampen the whole thing and allow it to dry. That'll give me a unit that I can pick up and place on my piece. Now that my pattern's established, I'm going to dampen them all again to join each individual dot into one bigger unit. And I like doing this because once it's dried, you can pick it up and place it directly on your piece and everything's exactly where it needs to be. So it's nice, clean placement. So be generous. I wanna make sure everyone's very strongly joined. I'm gonna lift this up. And I'm also just gonna take this straight edge of this really quick because I kind of nudged it and use it to line those up. I'm gonna allow this to dry and then we're gonna apply it to our piece. So my embellishments are dry and from this point on, I'm gonna be making connections with just water. I like using just water when adding accents because it keeps things nice and clean. So I'm dampening the face that I'm gonna be joining my dots to. And then I'm going to gently pick up my units. And place it. And then I'm going to go over it again with some water. To really connect things. So then you can build any pattern that you'd like on your rings. They really are a blank slate. And for the T, I'd wanna sand that face and clean it up on this edge here. But then you can either surround the edge with dots or put dots around on that flat face there. You can really do whatever you want. You don't need a T, you can do a stone. I think that would look lovely as well. But you can make these pieces your own and have a lot of fun with them. Once you've added all of your embellishments and you're happy with how your piece looks and it's completely dry, you're ready to fire. I like to fire these pieces in a dish of alumina hydrate for two hours at 1675. After firing, I finished these pieces by oxidizing them with Black Max. I usually like to use liver of sulfur or patina gel, but in this case, it was really nice to only apply it to the specific areas that I wanted it. That way, I didn't have to spend the time removing it from the inside of my ring. And then I placed them in the tumbler to bring them to this nice shiny surface. This hollow form ring was a really fun construction challenge and the finished piece was so satisfying. I hope this video helped answer any questions you may have on making hollow form rings in metal clay and that you feel like you can give making one of these showstoppers a shot. Thanks for watching. Visit our learning center at cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.